In these comments, I will prove two simple problems in relation to the bag integration, um, and they will show you some standard techniques or standard way we normally deal with with problems involving the bag integration. So the first problem says that function f is integrable if and only if the associated f plus and the associated f minus functions are integrable. Now, yeah, you if you followed my earlier comments, you by now you should realize that when when we, when we write something like this, we of course mean that not f directly belongs to the L1 space, but the associated class of equivalent measurable functions belong belongs to the L1, L1 space, and the same is true here and in here. Now, I have to give you the definition of what f plus and f minus are. This is a standard notation, and f plus denotes the function which is the half of the function f plus the absolute value of that function as a pointwise definition. And uh, if you think about this quickly, uh, you will realize there is an alternative expression for the f plus function, which is like this. f minus, this is the function which is given by like that, or like that. Like with with everything else, when you work with the classes of equivalences of measurable functions, of course we have to check that these definitions are correct, meaning that if I have another representative from the class of the function f, the associated f plus and f minus constructs will deliver equivalent class of measurable functions here. I'm not going to do it here in these comments, but I just said it and I leave it for you to verify that. It's a relatively easy thing. Now, directly from the construction here, we see that function f splits into the difference of f plus and f minus. And now we can address this two-sided implication. Um, yeah. uh, this way, implication this way, follows from the observation that absolute value is in fact sum of these two functions. And, the, and that's all. It's, a, it's, a, it's a one of the properties of the bag integral, uh, which says that the L1 space is in fact the linear space or vector space. Now, implication this way follows from the following two comparison inequalities, like that and like that. Both of them pointwise, all of these identities, this identity and this double inequality and this double inequality, they sort of pointwise inequalities which directly follow from the definition of f plus and f minus. I'm not going to comment more on that. Uh, although I say one extra thing here is that uh, this approach to integrable function via f plus and f minus, it gives you like a standard way of representing every function as a difference of two non-negative functions. So in many questions, many questions involving the bag integral, or and many other things. Uh, in fact, questions involving measurable functions, you can always reduce the question to only positive functions by representing your function as a difference of two non-negative functions like that. And then you can argue for the non-negative, do your argument for the non-negative function, and that will not reduce the generality of your argument because of this simple consideration. Now, the second thing which I want to comment on in this short video is that now, if my function is non-negative, then this function is integrable, or I have to say again more precisely that the class associated with this function is integrable, if and only if the supremum like that is finite. Now, this supremum, this supremum is taken over all subsets A which are measurable and over which my function is bounded, like this. Now, it's the first time I use the concept of Lebesgue integral over a subset. Uh, before we only just be thinking of Lebesgue integral over the whole measure space. The definition of the Lebesgue integral over a subset is like so. You just multiply your function by the appropriate indicator and you just take the Lebesgue integral over the whole measure space. Now, again, uh, this way, implication this way is very straightforward. All you have to observe is the following comparison inequality. So this function is controlled by this function. That's why integrability of the left-hand side follows from the integrability of the right-hand side. This is one of the standard canonical properties of the Bayes integration. Um, now, 
the other way around, this way, uh, it requires a little bit more work. Uh, I have to observe for that the function is integrable, if and only if the following limb soup is finite. Look at this limb soup. This is this comes from our canonical or standard approximation of every measurable function by simple functions. That's how we do that. And uh, we know that the integrability, in fact, is just equivalent to equivalent to finding a uniform approximation by simple functions such that each simple function individually Lebesgue integrable, that's the Lebesgue integral of this function, and they are uniformly bounded, the integrals of these functions. Now, when you look at this series, we all know that the series converge when the finite, when the, sorry, actually I didn't say it for well, I mean, I, I said it verbally, but it's not reflected in my notes, I have to say that this is finite, now I do. Uh, now, series converge if and only if the associated partial sums are uniformly bounded, and that's what I said here. I just squeeze in here another supremum here. Here it is. Over capital K, so where the capital K is the upper limit of my finite partial sum. So this is this should be finite. And that will be equivalent to this statement. Now if you look closely at this finite sum now, so if I just if you look closely at this finite sum, oh sorry, if you look closely at this finite sum, you will realize this sum is controlled by the integral of the original function f over subset A, where subset A is this union. It's a union of all of these sets for little k from 1 to capital K. Because over each individual subset like that, your function f dominates this fraction, which is the value of your simple function over this subset like this. Now the other thing which I observed, actually the supremum of your function over this set A is less than capital K on F, because functions are always less than that. And your k, your little k, doesn't go larger than capital K. And which means that this set A actually fits into this requirement, and that's why this integral is controlled by this number. And this number is in fact independent or independent on of sorry, capital K and little n. That's why this partial sum is controlled by this uni uh, unique number independent of little k or sorry, capital K or little n, and that's why this limb soup of soups limb soups of supremums is controlled by this number as well. And I finished the proof.